Hey folks, I'm Brendan, and you're watching The Overqualified Henchman. After putting up last week's video, I realized it was number 26, which means that I've been doing this, putting up a new video every Monday for half a year. So happy half birthday to The Overqualified Henchman. Feels like it won't be long before we're hitting a year and then beyond. The future is now! Or at least my look at July's loot crate is now, and its theme happens to be futuristic. Segways? Where we're going, we don't need segways. Starting things off, the t-shirt for this month is a blueprint of the portal gun from Rick and Morty. Now everyone can build their very own portal gun. Is that what you want, Morty? For every chuckle nut with a finger up his nose and a hand down his pants to be able to tear a hole in the fabric of reality whenever he wants? Think it through, Morty. You know what the tourist industry does to a small town? Multiply that by literal infinity. Sure, you destroyed the entire multiverse, but at least you got a cool t-shirt out of it. You're pretty sick, Morty. It's pretty sick. <clears throat> Next we have this Mega Man figure from Kid Robot. Normally this is a blind box where you can get one of several characters, but in this case, every loot crate came with the red and white variant of the fighting robot himself. The zine calls this out as an exclusive item, but the box says that the red and white variant is 1 in 20 in the regular assortment, so I'm not sure if you can get this guy elsewhere or not. He's got the regular kid robot articulation at the neck and shoulders, and it's definitely a cute design, but the paint is noticeably sloppy. Whether that's going to bug you coming from a mass-produced figure like this or not is up to you, but for me, shelf space is at enough of a premium that I'm not going to settle. I'm always up for new comics, and here's a Loot Crate edition of 4001 AD number 1 from Valiant Comics. I've got kind of a soft spot for Valiant when it comes to comics publishers as sort of a scrappy underdog that just won't go down. They were founded in 89 by a couple of big names from Marvel, and they did really well in the early 90s, which probably explains why one of their most prominent characters is named Bloodshot. The company ended up getting sold to a video game publisher, and things went up and down for a few years, but recently they've had a big resurgence. Personally, I really enjoyed the relaunch of Quantum and Woody. It sort of does for superheroes what the show Archer does for super spies. As for 4001 AD, imagine if you spent your whole life thinking you were Superman, bringing hope to the people of sort of a Blade Runner setting only to find out that you are really Darth Vader stamping out rebellion on behalf of an emperor who only cares about power. I won't spoil any more than that, but if you've got nostalgia for the 90s or just really like creative reimaginings, think about giving Valiant a shot. A blood shot, that is. Good news, everyone! It's a model of the Planet Express ship from Futurama. This is easily my favorite item in this crate, where the Mega Man figure was a little sloppy, the detail on this is sharp and clean, and in a really nice touch, the ship connects to the base with a magnet, so it's easy to take off and go flying around. <laughs> I'm gonna set this here for now, because we'll actually be coming back to it. First though, we've got this USS Enterprise dedication plaque. It's a repositionable sticker that you could put on basically anything, although I haven't come up with a good idea yet, because I'm sure somebody will ask. It's specifically for the Enterprise D, meaning it's the next generation model. It's a neat thought, but like I said, I'm not really sure what to do with it. Let me know in the comments if you've got an idea. The pin for this month is also Star Trek themed. In gold and white, it's the classic live long and prosper gesture. I'm sort of of two minds about this, because on one hand, it turned out really nicely, and I could definitely see putting this on a bag or a jacket. On the other hand, it's strictly a Star Trek design. It's got nothing to do with Loot Crate, it's not a mashup. So if you were displaying all of your Loot Crate pins together, it may stick out like a sore thumb. One of the neat things about Loot Crate that I've never really spent much time on in a video is the art design that goes into the crates themselves. The box can often be transformed into something else to add a display or play feature, and this month's really stood out to me. With just a little bit of work, the crate turns into this landing pad for a starship, and the perfect place to display the Planet Express model. Sure, the box is still probably destined for the recycling bin sooner rather than later, but going the extra mile to turn the packaging into something this cool is pretty neat. Thanks for watching. Remember to like, subscribe, and share, and let me know in the comments below what you think of the futuristic crate. I'm looking forward to another six months of videos, but let me know what content you'd like to see from the overqualified henchman. Until then, keep on henching. <laughs>